Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. In previous episodes, I showed you new Excel functions Microsoft released in 2022, and now I want to show you one of the last ones. As the name says, the expand function will expand the size of an existing range of cells. Just be aware that as of this recording in December 2022, you can tell by the hat it's December, the expand function is still in beta, so you might not have access to it yet. Anyway, expanding a range of cells, or an array, as Excel officially calls it, might not sound like it makes any sense, right? What's to prevent you from typing or pasting more data into adjacent rows and columns? Well, what's great about expand is that since it's a function, the process is dynamic. There's a link between existing data and the expanded range. That's the good news. The not so good news is, well, you'll see in a couple of minutes. Does this sound confusing? I don't blame you. So let's take a look, see how it works. I want to start by looking at the syntax. The function has four arguments. We say equals expand, open the parenthesis, and the first argument is the array. So that's what Excel's documentation calls it, an array. But don't let that confuse you or scare you. It's just a range. There's nothing special about it, and it has nothing to do with array functions. It doesn't have to be a table or anything. So you put in the cell references, or if you've created a range name, you can use that. Second argument is the number of rows, and that means how many rows do we want to end up with, not how many new ones we want. Comma, the other two arguments, the remaining two arguments, are optional. That's why they're in brackets. So the third argument is number of columns. And it's optional just the same way the number of rows is. It's not how many columns you have, but how many columns you want to end up with. And the last argument is padding. And here's the deal with padding. You can have the new cells contain data. You'll probably want to use this option because otherwise it will look like Excel is throwing an error. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Now let's go to the worksheet. So here's a typical worksheet. We have numbers for the first two quarters, but not for the second two quarters. But we want to give this worksheet to someone or maybe link it into a PowerPoint presentation and not leave those two columns blank. Well, rather than putting stuff in and having to remember to remove it, the expand function will let us have two versions. So the first thing I'm going to do is select these column headers. I'm going to copy to the clipboard, and I'm going to go down and paste them here a little bit below. Hit the escape key to clear off the marching ants. Now, if we take a look at the original data, below the column headers, we have 10 rows of data. And we want to keep that, but we want to expand the array to these two additional columns, so we're going to have a total of five. So we're going to use 10 and 5 in the function. Not very high-level math here. So I'm going to leave out that last argument for now so you can see what I meant before about errors. So let's do this. I'm going to start right down there under that column header, and I'm going to say equals expand. Now, when I start typing the first few letters, you notice that one of the functions that comes up is expand. If you don't have that show up on your machine, it just means you don't have access to the function yet. I'm going to hit the tab key to finish typing in, and you could see the syntax there. So the array I'm going to use as this existing data right there. As I said, I could create a range name for that and use that in the formula, but for now I'm just going to leave it as cell references, put in the comma, so as I said a moment ago, I want to have 10 rows, comma, five columns. That's what I want to end up with. I'm not going to use that last argument right now. Close the parenthesis, press enter. So here's what I was talking about. So this gives us the original data that we put in, and these additional columns is giving us these NA errors. So yeah, it's an error, but this is what's supposed to happen. Now, since this function is still in beta, my guess is that by the time it becomes released in a standard part of Excel, this won't happen. But for now, let's go and fix that. One thing before I do, you'll notice this is one of the new spill functions. You can see we've got this kind of outline border. 
when I click the cell where I type the formula in, you can see in the formula bar, it looks normal. If I click any of the other cells, you see that's grayed out. So that's also how you know it's a spill function. So I'm just going to double click the cell where I typed in the formula. And what I'm going to do, let's delete that closing parenthesis, comma, and now I'm going to put in that last argument. And I want all of those cells to be filled with the text TBD. So we're just going to say the content of those cells is to be determined. Close the parenthesis, enter, and now you can see that it's filled with whatever I typed in. Okay, so let's look at some of the good news and some of the bad news. As I said originally, this is dynamic. So let's say I change something in the original. I'll just go to that first number there. It's right now is 325. You can see it's reflected there. Let's say if I make that 400 and enter, you notice that comes out down there in the link data. I can also format some of these cells. So even though this is a spill function, I can still select these two columns and maybe I want these to be uh, center justified, something like that, so it looks a little nicer. So here's the not so good news. Since this is a spill function, you can't edit those two new columns directly. Like if I want to take quarter one and maybe increase it by 5% to get quarter three, right? Like if I go in here and put in a formula, I can't do that because I'll get an error. Actually, I'll show you. For example, if I go in there and say, all right, I'm going to take that and multiply it by 1.05, so I'm going to make that 5% bigger, and I enter it, look what happens. This gives me zero because there's no number in there, and this gives me a spill error because it has the spill function has no place to put all the stuff. So I'd have to go there and delete, and now I get everything back. So that's what I was talking about, that you can't manipulate these cells directly. I think that limits the usefulness of this new function. Maybe direct manipulation will come in a later version? I don't know. As of now, in December 2022, the function hasn't been released yet, so you might not have access to it. I mentioned this at the beginning. But if you're subscribed to Excel 365 on either Windows or Mac, you'll probably have it available in 2023. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets. <laughs>